Karl Marx is best known for his role as a socialist revolutionary and as the source material for revolutionists from Vladimir Lenin to Fidel Castro to Mao Zedong. He was an economist, a historian, a sociologist, and a philosopher. But it's important to note that these weren't separate studies he undertook, but rather different aspects to the same idea, communism. Before we can even begin to talk about Karl Marx, we need some background information. For centuries and even millennia, people participated in a traditional economy. Eras came and went, but two things remained constant. Life was rural, and most people worked in agriculture. If they didn't work in the fields, they were fishermen, hunters, or local tradesmen. Every community produced what they needed to produce. Travel was scarce, and importing things was not usually an option. So they had to choose to either make it within their small community, or go without it. Also, during most of these times, there weren't any for-profit corporations. If land wasn't owned by an individual or family, it was owned by the government, the church, or a non-profit corporation like a hospital or university. Then came something that changed the world. East India Companies. With the advancement of imperialism, several European empires chartered East India Companies. Out of this, the Dutch East India Company created the world's first publicly traded company, and thus capitalism was born. With the newfound ability to acquire financial capital from the public, along with colonial trade and some technological innovations, the Industrial Revolution took place. With the revolution, labor moved from rural farms to city factories. Instead of producing their own goods, people began working for a wage. And it was near the end of this revolution that we meet our future revolutionary, Karl Marx. Marx was born in 1918 in Prussia. The newspapers were frequently censored, and Marx's high school was under police surveillance because it was suspected of harboring liberal teachers. He later got his doctorate in philosophy. In studying history, Marx concluded that history is a result of class struggle. He believed that capitalism was exploitation. The wealthy, or the bourgeoisie, own the means of production, but provide no value themselves. Instead, the workers, or the proletariat, provide all of the value, but only get a small fraction of the profits. The profits they got were paid in wages, and not as an owner, which Marx thought was detrimental to the human spirit. He thought that ideas such as religion were part of an oppressed society, or the opium of the people. So in studying this, he was trying to answer a big and very important question. Who should own the means of production? He also believed that the true value of a commodity was the amount of necessary labor required to produce it, and that a deviation from that was something he called commodity fetishism, where a monetary value is associated with a commodity and consumers believe it to have intrinsic value of its own. In other words, he believed that people fall under the illusion that the item's value comes from the item itself, instead of the labor. It's why people pay a lot more for one brand of something over the other, even though the labor involved was nearly identical. A criticism of this idea is that it's a result of anthropomorphism, assigning personal characteristics to items, efficiency of labor, and a taste for art that allow two similar products to have such a high price difference. Marx argued that the proletariat should not suffer under these conditions and should instead revolt. Workers of the world unite, you have nothing to lose but your chains, he said. In fact, he even argued that it was inevitable that capitalism self-destruct. After writing his works, such as the Communist Manifesto and Das Kapital, Marx died in 1883 at age 64, but his once theoretical works were about to become reality. The first major communist revolution took place in Russia in 1917, followed by China and other countries. It appears after over a century since the Russian Revolution that the ideas of Karl Marx were too theoretical and oversimplified to be put in practice. In fact, perhaps impossible to be put into practice. No country has ever been communist. No society has ever been truly classless, moneyless, and stateless, as true communism requires. 
People suffered in an autocratic environment that was supposed to be for the people in the first place. During communism's reign, over 100 million people were killed. But despite the tragedies, it's worth talking about Marx, and not oppressing the mention of him because of his direct ties to communism. He is an important figure in recent history, and although his medicine was worse than the illness it tried to cure, he was a smart guy, and many of his thoughts are relevant today. Whether or not he believed people would actually follow through with his vision is unknown. But one thing we can say for sure is that he had some witty things to say. Here's one. The last capitalist we will hang is the one that sold us the rope. And until next time, thanks for watching.